So I mentioned um, as part of the third year um, group programming projects uh, this week to many of you that it would be a good idea to um, partition your work and create libraries and then use those libraries in your main app, therefore making it easier. So I've got a quick example here of how to set up Qt to generate a library and then how to use it. So I decided to write a very simple logger library which um, will create a single class that you can log to either the console using color or to a file or to both at the same time so that you can keep debug messages. And the first thing we need to do in the pro to create a library is to use the lib template. So this template um, sets Qt up to create a library rather than a um, executable program. Now by default it will set up a dynamic library, so a .so or a .dll if you're under Windows, um, or a .dylib under Mac OS X. So we need to further add to this static lib if we want to create a, a standard static library, which I'm doing for this mainly for ease. Um, so adding these two to your code will create that library for you. And then the rest of it is more or less a standard Qt project. Um, in this case, I also decided that I was going to make my logger um, as a simple interface as possible. So I'm using um, my own namespace first, which is a good idea because it, it allows us to just separate all of our code together. So everything's in NCCA log. And then I have a couple of enumerated types to make it easier for anyone using the library to set certain parameters. Then my main logger class here has been implemented using the pimple idiom so that I can hide away all of the implementation detail and you, you never need to see this because you just get the header. So we have a constructor, destructor, um, uh, another constructor passing in a file name. And we have various methods which are going to do certain things. The only main bit of implementation detail um, that's been exposed are these two type defs allowing us to um, basically um, make it easier to write our streams here. And I'm using the boost um, T device or boost T which allows us to split a stream to go to two separate streams when we're writing to it. Now the main part of this is the pimple idiom here, so I've got a basic class called impl, then I'm using um, a smart pointer to hold that, so when it's finished it will clear up the implementation, call the correct um, destructors and everything else. Um, then internally in my CPP file I've got my private class um, ncca logger impl so this is all of the implementation detail i've made all of this public because i don't really um, care about encapsulation this is private to the class remember and here's all the implementation detail which i don't really want visible in my interface in my header file so these are all the internal flags various other bits and pieces and it's also got a series of methods that it can use to access data and do various bits and pieces. Again, I just put them in the impl for ease and convenience. So when the class is constructed, impl will be constructed. It opens the log file. It defaults to output.log, but you can override that with the uh, constructor. Um, it creates the t, and you can see the t is going to go to std c out and also the file. Later I will change these so either one could be turned on and off using slash dev null as um, the output device which will speed things up and disable debugging if you wish. Um, then I've got methods for getting the current time in certain formats. I create a format string later, writing out my line numbers. In this case I can dynamically set the pad because I create a format string here, a percent zero number D, and then later I use that there with the actual line number so I can change the padding of the line numbers. And I have various methods. This is a problematic one at the moment, and I need to sort out that um, this gets sent to the stream as a series of escape characters. That works well when it's going to the console. What it doesn't do is work particularly well when it's going to file. Now, I intend to do a, a viewer that will colorize things, and I'm going to write my own in Qt. 
but you open in other editors, you just get um, escape characters, which you know don't look particularly good. Then my constructor creates the impl class, default output log, otherwise using the string, and then various other methods to log message, error and warning. These use um, VARGs, so we have an ellipsis which is expanded, as you can see here, goes through, creates the um, string from that, and then writes it out. Bit problematic that I've got a set buffer size there, but it should be fine. If you've got error messages that long, it's better to split them anyway. And then various methods to um, enable and disable, set colors, things like that. Um, set my timestamps. Um, I've also written a, a method called cout, which basically returns the stream so that we can use standard overloading. So if I compile this, what's going to happen is it's going to create in the directory lib this lib ncc um, a logger dot a, which is just a standard library. You can see all the symbols and everything that have been put in there from all the other things that have been linked in. Um, if I were to go back to the Qt project and uh, remove the static lib um, thing there and we rebuild um, so we can go up and we can um, run qmake and then rebuild all we'll go through and rebuild you'll notice now that we've got this dy lib there that's fine but what you're going to have to do is put that in a place um, that your LD library path searches. This is why static libraries are generally easier because they're actually linked in at compile time and the code is just added in. With the dynamic libraries, they're loaded at runtime and the runtime linker needs to know where things are. So I'm going to revert this back to using the static lib. So the code that's using this, the main line we need is this libs plus equals minus L and the path to the library. So this is relative to the project, so it's looking one directory below for lib. And then we link in our library with minus L NCCA log, logger. Um, and then when I'm using this, I create a logger. Here I'm trying two loggers. I can use it almost like stud C out here, as you can see, just entering data out. Or I can log message, I can set color, I can set the time format. Um, the um, messages do printf style formatting, so we can use it in a standard way like printf, which is very useful. And then we can set line pad and things like that. I've been testing it under threaded conditions. There's still a few problems with it under threaded conditions, uh, but that will be um, changed very soon. Uh, I just need to uh, work on a few things. You'll notice that that didn't compile properly then, and that's because it's trying to automatically link to the dynamic library. Now it's linked to the static library, it's fine. So my little test program here, if I run um, this, if I just quickly remove all the logs and run it, so oops, clean remake so it's not compiled to the static library. Um, so if I run this now, you can see it prints out nice colourful error messages, all the different elements are working. We've got colour, we've got different date formats that we can use when we want. And also, you can see that we've got um, our file stored to a text. As I explained earlier, we've got those escape characters there which need to be sorted. And I will eventually build my own um, viewer for this, which will be a little Qt app. So that's how you make a library. I'll put the code on GitHub so you can access it all, and I'll put some comments in the blog post so you can see the rest of it.